Well, hello again. Welcome to The Way I Do It. You can see behind me is my 2015 Ram 3500 with the 6.7 Cummins. I've been getting the engine code telling me that there's a problem with my grid heater. So, yeah. I've been through this before, and I just lived with it. My truck has nearly 400,000 miles on it. Okay? So... I've been through it before, and some potential causes of the grid heater problem could simply be the relay over here. So there's a relay which is like a solenoid. It's a heavy duty, high amperage relay. So there's the relay. So yeah, it could simply be that relay. I'm not sure where they get the reading for the, uh, for the uh, amp draw. But uh, the relay could be a problem. From that relay, you go to the grid heater connection, which is right there. And you have the dreaded grid heater bolt. This is not actually the bolt. The bolt that fails is on the other end of this. It goes down through a rubber grommet and through the other side. Now, with this having made it 400,000 miles, I really doubt there's a problem there. But... Uh, at this point, because I'm getting a code, I actually uh, acquired another grid heater. So I'm going to do the uh, $25 fix on that. So uh, let me see if I can do a little wiggle test. See, on a, I'm attached up here. But on a wiggle test, I'm getting no wiggle. But I don't know that that's really a good test. By $25 fix, that's the cost of my gasket. I got a grid heater from another guy, and I sold the air horn to get my money back, actually, for the whole thing. Okay, so at this point, I've got the EGR valve removed. This plug had that little slider, so it's on the bottom. But uh, that way is unlocked, and then you simply push this lever and pull it off and this one has no lock so you just push the lever and pull it off and I removed it from this side there was a bolt holding it under here and the reason I did that way is because I want this tube out of the way to give me a little more working room um, I've taken off the mount for my uh, dipstick here. I removed the grid heater nut, which generally they tell you not to mess with unless you're taking it off. Okay, I took this off. It was hanging on that tube. The grid heater uh, cable was also hanging on that tube. And this I actually, I used a little pick. I got in there and lifted the lever up so I can just reuse this. You can put a new uh, tie wrap on there if you want, but why not reuse it if you can? Okay. So the next part will be uh, take off your air horn for your, your intake. And then get that and your... Uh, um, other necessary tubes out of the way. Now you might say, Chris, why don't you just do a grid heater delete? Well, with all the uh, situation going on in California with emissions and reprogramming, I think it's best that I stay completely stuck because I'm in New York State and they generally follow California and I want to be able to register my truck. So if I'm not stuck, they may... Uh, they may bump our trucks. Just being careful, that's all. As far as how long it took, I did spend quite a bit of time. Also did a valve adjustment. Uh, a lot of wires to get out of the way. It's my first time through, uh, so it does take some time. I think a guy could probably do it in a couple hours. He's uh, real quick, knows what he's doing. Nice thing is all the connectors are unique. On some older cars, you'd have connectors that would fit multiple plugs, and that was a pain. All right, so it's hard to see with the sun here, but 
I've got all the lines unhooked. I got the first six lines unhooked on both ends using just a standard uh, uh, Craftsman 19 millimeter. For the last line, because the hook for the engine is in the way, I ended up going to Harbor Freight and I actually just bought their cheap uh, Pittsburgh crow's foot and it worked. But uh, yeah, I did break down a little bit. So now I own the Icon Crowfoot. Crow's foot. Crowfoot? Crow's foot. So, uh, yeah, I'm in business. So then I intake piece off. I'm going to vacuum some debris out of there and then go ahead and get that cover off that manifold. Okay, so there's the part removed the grid heater 400,000 miles on it and I don't believe it's been a part so I'll clean this up and get a better look at it the one I'm replacing this with is from a 2019 which is right there uh, that was a guy that got scared and bought the banks unit to put on it so uh, I'm not sure what my code was from but uh, when I get this cleaned up, maybe we'll see. Okay, so here we're set up with an ohm meter. Set on mega ohms. And of course it's open. I have the probe down here clamped in place. If I touch the probe. At point 0.3. If I come up here on the bolt. There you go. So there's nothing there. If I come over to the, the next in line, right there, there's nothing. Nothing as far as no problem. If I come to the next spot, I'm not getting a good contact. Let's go right to the check the whole thing. We got the grid heater less than an ohm so no problem. 400,000 miles. Um, obviously if you want to check this outside of the wiggle test you can actually remove the intake horn real easy. Maybe yeah you can remove this intake horn real easy. And then you can just go with a voltmeter or ohm meter go from the post go from the post to here and that'll tell you if you have a problem because if you got resistance that's where it's going to get hot how this how this comes loose is really beyond me because like I say this one's got 400,000 miles on it so let me get the other one all set to go and I'll show you what the easy fix is okay so there you have it what you got here is I take welded the stud to the nut and the nut to the strap and then also down here, I did the strap to the post. And I did it on this side, mostly. I did the, I did the nut to the stud with a little tack, the nut to the strap, and nothing down there. And then up here on this end, I just welded everything except the nut to the stud because, well, that's what I did. So I got it welded. And th they say this one doesn't really come apart, the guy. So now um, installation is reverse of disassembly. Okay, so it's going back together just fine. 
didn't have any trouble. I, of course, replaced the gasket on the manifold cover, which I'm not sure is necessary. It's a metal gasket, but I put a new one on, and the Felpro kit came with a new gasket for the, the horn. Um, I'm not doing the gaskets for the EGR. Everything went together pretty well. And while I had it apart, I pulled the valve cover off and checked the valves. So of course, that's a whole other deal, real simple. You pull the top off the valve cover, take the filter off, pull the valve cover off. You wanna make sure you leave, you gotta separate it down here and leave this on because that's got your wiring harness. And then you go through you put it to top dead center. You check, basically check the valves that are loose. 10 for intake, 26 for exhaust. And then you go degrees on the crankshaft. You use a 15 millimeter socket on this 2015 truck. It's a 15 millimeter socket on a breaker bar. You can just get it in there and get it on one of the four bolts that hold the uh, pulley on. So then you uh, get it back to top dead center you got it's this is marked on the balancer on the damper with like pinprick markings um, they don't show up real well and if you got any amount of rust they're real hard to see but that's top dead center and close is good it's like nuclear warfare close is good so then uh, you probably want one of those feeler gauges that's got the little bend in it too you don't want just a regular straight feeler 12 and 13 yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, insulator back in because it came out. Hook up my hoses, hook my wires up, and uh, fire it up. Here's the tools I use to get the intake apart. Obviously, you need shop towels to clean up. The soot's pretty nasty. Some pry bars just to help push some things out of the way. When you do the fuel lines, absolutely do not try to bend the fuel lines. Here's a 19 millimeter combination wrench. That'll take the fuel lines off. I did tap the wrench with this brass hammer just to help me a little bit. A wire brush to clean the suit off, clean up the gasket surfaces as the brake clean. I use these little picks to open up some of the zip ties. You can cut them and just add more. Flashlight, because sometimes you run out of light or have a tight spot. Sockets I used were a 8, 9, 10, 11. 11's for the hose clamp. Primarily uh, 8 and 10 are for the bolts. I also have this shorter 10 millimeter. I use an extension. Since he's a quarter inch, I had the adapter. I had a small swiveling, uh, this is a Harbor Freight uh, quarter inch drive. I have my longer quarter inch drive, which uh, is also a 3 eighths. I also have this, well it's a 3 quarter inch crow's foot, but the crow's foot um, is a 19 millimeter too. You need that for the fuel line, so you may need it for the rear fuel line because the hook that they use to drop the uh, engine into place can be in the way. I use this because it's quick and easy and I'm lazy now. Magnet to retrieve anything you drop. I use these pliers to help uh, get some of the wire connectors apart. And I believe that pretty much uh, covers what you need. If I left anything out, comment below. I want to do a little wrap up on this. I put a couple thousand miles on this truck since I put the new grid heater on it and set the valves. I got to say the valve lash adjustment was incredible. I don't know that it has a lot more power, but it runs so much smoother. I set the valve lash because it was getting noisy and it was, it was really noisy when it first started. So now it's quiet again. Um, as far as a grid heater, no more light. Not sure where the bad connection was or what was causing the light. The old grid heater, uh, I thought about selling it, but it's just gonna go in the trash. 400,000 miles, a lot of heat cycles on it. 
so it can just go. As far as going with the Banks, yeah, uh, Gail Banks is a great guy. He does great work. Uh, had a friend who used his equipment 30 years ago, and uh, I think it's really good. It can provide more power. Uh, if you have a smoother entrance for air, especially if you're doing your um, your gauge for the turbocharger is upstream quite a bit. So if you clear it out downstream, you're actually going to be able to pack more air in at the same pressure at the uh, sensor. Um, could be a bad thing, but I, I think Mr. Banks has it figured out. But I just want a stock truck that works. 400,000 miles is fine. Uh, not going to get a significant fuel mileage increase on it. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. That's the way I do it.